How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay and today we're talking about The Motley Fool. Yeah, again. That's because it's officially been one year that I have been a member of The Motley Fool Stock Advisor Service. So what I'm going to do today is give a quick overview of my one year in The Motley Fool Stock Advisor, some quick thoughts on my experience with it, and then we're going to look at how every single one of The Motley Fool Stock Advisor stock picks from 2021 performed. So if that sounds interesting to you, hit the like button down below in this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and let's get started. Now for those of you that are unfamiliar, the Motley Fool Stock Advisor service is a premium stock picking service. It costs about 200 bucks a year, and they give you two brand new stock picks every month. And there is a lot to like about the Motley Fool Stock Advisor. I can't lie to you, I do like two brand new stock ideas being delivered right to my email box every month. Now you should never buy a stock just off of any one person or services recommendation. But the Stock Advisor service did put a few companies on my radar that I otherwise never would have heard of, and I did end up buying some shares in a few of the companies they recommended. One thing I did find kind of odd about the stock picks that The Motley Fool was delivering over the course of the year was that almost every one of the stocks they recommended came with stock prices in the $100 to $500 range. In fact, only three of the companies they recommended all year long had a share price of below $100. Now, share price alone is fairly meaningless to the quality of the company, but it can be a barrier to entry to some investors. And when you're paying $200 for a service, and that service goes along and tells you that the ideal strategy is to buy up to 25 of their stock picks, that starts to represent a real need for a lot of capital that you're gonna to have to put to work into these stock picks to build up a meaningful position. Now, fractional shares are a thing, but I don't think a lot of people are shelling out $200 for the stock advisor service only so they can have half a share here and a third of a share there, etc. Another thing I noticed over the course of the year is that on the day that the Motley Fool Stock Advisor will put out their new stock recommendation, the stock they recommend that day will jump in price sometimes 5 to 10% just on the recommendation alone. So if you're following along blindly with the Motley Fool investing in every company they tell you to on the day they tell you to, you may be losing out in 5 to 10% in value over the share price that they're gonna quote everybody as, as the price that they recommended the stock at. Now, one other thing, and then we'll get right into the performance. But the other thing I found a little confusing over the course of the year is yes, they will deliver you two new stock picks every month that they say you should buy. But along with those two new stock recommendations, they always have a rotating list of five to 10 stocks that they call best buys or timely buys. So really, when you're a member of the service, you're constantly getting bombarded with stocks that they think you should be buying. And they don't really give any guidance on how to build a portfolio out of them other than just saying, buy! And speaking of bombarded, once you sign up for a Motley Fool premium service, you will be bombarded with marketing emails. You will get one to two emails every day from The Motley Fool with a sales pitch for some other premium service they want you to sign up to in addition to The Motley Fool Stock Advisor service. They are relentless with the marketing email, so if you're gonna sign up, be prepared. But with all that out of the way, let's take a look at the performance. I kept a spreadsheet and tracked every one of The Motley Fool stock recommendations over the course of 2021. In 2021, The Motley Fool Stock Advisor recommended 21 different stocks to their subscribers as buys. There were actually three stocks they recommended multiple times, and the results were not good. Is that I never ask my clients to judge me on my winners. I ask them to judge me on my losers because I have so few. Let's start with the winners that The Motley Fool had this year. And I'm not gonna give away the actual companies or ticker symbols here, because as those of you who have seen my other Motley Fool videos know, they're quite litigious on having YouTube videos removed. So I'm just gonna, not gonna take any chances and we're just gonna look at the results here. And the, the best performing pick from The Motley Fool Stock Advisor this year was a pick they made on April 1st of 2021. The company is a project management and collaboration software company, 
And from that April 1st recommendation through the end of 2021, that stock has returned 74.22%. That beats the S&P 500 by 56.4%. The second best pick The Motley Fool made in 2021 came on March 18th. The company they recommended that day is a company that makes equipment used in semiconductor manufacturing. So with the news of the chip shortages and all that going on this year, it's no surprise that this one performed well also. This company is up 33.7% overall from that March 18th recommendation, and it beats the S&P 500 by 11.4%. The third best performing stock from the Motley Fool Stock Advisor in 2021 is a large and fast growing e-commerce platform. They recommended this company on May 6th and it's up 26.1% from that date. That beats the S&P 500 by 13.3%. Now I have to note here, they re-recommended this e-commerce stock on October 7th, and that recommendation in October is losing to the S&P by about 9%. The fourth best pick The Motley Fool made in 2021 came on August 19th. That stock was a financial software company that owns a very popular tech software, as well as a very popular personal finance website. That pick is up 19.72% since their recommendation, beating the S&P 500 by 11%. Now the fifth best pick that The Motley Fool made in 2021 can be one of two companies depending on how you look at it. If we go by overall return, The Motley Fool's fifth best performing pick came on February 18th. That company is a veterinary diagnostics company. The stock is up 18.03% since the recommendation, but it's losing to the S&P 500 over that time by 5.2%. So if we go by overall return, that's number five. If we wanna go against the S&P 500, the fifth best performing stock came out of their August 5th recommendation. And that was a company that's a lending platform that relies heavily on AI to vet its borrowers. Since that recommendation on August 5th, that company is beating the S&P 500 by 11.4%. And those are the top five best picks The Motley Fool made in 2021. Before we get into the worst picks, I wanna again remind you, hit the like button down below on this video if you're enjoying it. You may notice that down by the subscribe button, there is now a button that says join. And that is just a new way you can help support me and the channel. It costs you a few bucks a month and it allows me to do things like join The Motley Fool so I can make videos like this in the future. So now let's get into the fun stuff. Let's get into the five worst picks that The Motley Fool Stock Advisor made in 2021. This one we'll do in reverse order, so we'll save the worst picks for last. So we're gonna start with the best of the worst, coming in at number five, was their recommendation on September 16th. This was a software company that creates tools that helps teams collaborate on projects together. And that does sound like the same kind of company as their biggest winner of the year. However, it is a different company and it is a big loser. From September 16th, this company is down 36.64%, losing to the S&P by 42.6%. Coming in at number four, we have a stock The Motley Fool really likes because they recommended it not once, but twice. This company is a very popular cloud-based e-signature service. And from their first recommendation on July 15th, this stock is down 44.99%. And from their second recommendation on October 21st, it's down 45.55%. That's lagging the S&P 500 by 54.1% and 49.7% respectively. Coming in at number three on the Motley Fool's five worst stock picks of 2021, and this one hurts because this one was a company I actually invested money in. Came their pick on February 4th. This pick was a popular website that connects freelance workers with clients for a small sum of money. And this pick is down 56.65% since the recommendation, which trails the S&P 500 by 81.4%. So thanks for that one, guys. But it only gets better from there because the number two worst performing Motley Fool Stock Advisor pick of 2021 is another company I invested in. This company is an online insurance company 
that many people still think is going to totally disrupt the insurance markets. But from the time Motley Fool recommended it on January 12th, this stock is down 73.28% overall and 99.7% behind the S&P 500. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, the worst Motley Fool stock advisor pick of 2021. This pick came on March 4th. The company is a platform for game developers to help monetize the games that they create. And hopefully this company does that better than its stock returns money back to its shareholders because it is down 73.77% since March 4th. And that is trailing the S&P 500 by a whopping 100.7%. So overall, of the 24 picks The Motley Fool made in 2021, 15 of them are losing to the S&P 500, and 11 of those 15 are losing to the S&P 500 by more than 15%. Of the nine winners that The Motley Fool had, only one is outperforming the S&P 500 by that same 15% margin. To The Motley Fool's credit, they say you should hang on to all of their picks for a minimum of five years, so maybe one year is just too short of a timeline. I guess time will tell. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a fun one to dig through the numbers on. If you want to see more videos like this, check out these videos right over here. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.